everybody and welcome on today's video. Today I'd like to get this uh, Scots pine out of his pot, uh, have a look at the root base and try to put it in good draining bonsai soil with the nicest possible root spreads that I can obtain at this very moment. So let's have a look. So the spine is well looking healthy and uh, Oh, there's a whole ant family crawling in that. Well, at least it means that there's some aeration in the soil. Um, and what is uh, very good is that we have a whole lot of uh, mycelium here. So I'm definitely going to save some of that by just getting the sides off. Or maybe I'll just cut them off right now. So I'll work my way around and make sure that afterwards I put that back in the soil. That's off, see, this is this uh, mycelium. Now pines are not known for their beautiful spreading root bases, but it's not because they're not known for that that I cannot try to do the best that I can to create a good root base. And I must say this thing looks like it's been growing in some compost and then mixed with some pumice. Definitely not Akadama. So yeah, this uh, liverworth here is a sign of a not too good draining material, which is already very obvious. And well, I'm going to shut down the camera and continue the raking out of this root ball and then I'll be back but of course you know this takes time and uh, yeah it's a pine so you don't want to be too severe on the roots so what I'm really doing is sticking my chopstick through the, the root ball and not tear the roots, but try to push the soil through the root ball. Well, you will not believe it, but it took me two hours to get all the soil out of this root ball and untangle this whole thing. So one thing that is obvious is that this is a seedling. Well, it's almost impossible to take cuttings from from pines so yeah now this I'll try to show you is the taproot it's going from here to here and then it goes down here so this is the taproot and well surely up to this curve I'm not going to need that so I remove this portion of root which is well not enormous but not nothing either and then I have a few possibilities I can take this part here as a root plane it's not bad but then I, I'll have to remove this and this which is again a whole lot of roots uh, 
But I've been thinking maybe there's another method. Um, and it uh, can be successful. This is a little dead stump root here that I can remove. I've, I was thinking maybe to have a nice root flare. I can try to keep all the roots that I have even these high roots, but to try to constrict them here in order to create a rather flat root base and well in the coming years I will still be stuck with this portion. Well, no. I I'm also going to reduce that. You see that's, that's not a lot of roots that I can. And it is three centimeters in the pot. So I'm just thinking of constricting the roots so that they fuse together, which should be very possible when this tree grows. These roots will fuse and become one. And I can try to arrange them as nicely as I possibly can. Okay, so that's the easy part, and now I have to position some. But this is a pine, and they're, they're not known to have the most beautiful root flare. But okay, it doesn't matter that you cannot try. So I, I know that I'm blocking the view, but I'm right handed, I can help it <laughs> try to show you what I'm doing but I'm sure that this is a acceptable compromise to have a reasonable root base one day and of course this tree will be in recovery mode for the rest of the growing season Okay, so I'm going up again. This is a technique that I used for maples as well, with uh, really good success, I must say. Okay, so I don't have a whole lot of raffia left, so it's time to tie this together. Okay, so here we have it. Sharpened my scissors, I'm very glad I did that. Looks like they're new. And now my microphone wire is entangled in the tree. So that's not good. Okay, <coughs> that's better. A few little strings of raffia that escaped. All right, so with this, it is possible to create a rather radial root base. Is it perfect? No, of course, but if you remember what, what we started with, this is very good. This is extremely good. Now, let's just hope that the tree agrees and that this works out fine for the tree. I might just try to balance a little bit the roots. And you see there are a few black roots that means yeah because this this root ball was a disaster. I think all these root balls of seedlings are disasters. Yeah, you have to start somewhere.
It was in clay, in, in, in garden soil. Uh, there were little pieces of stone in it. It was kind of bad, but okay. And that's the first step. So I'm going to get this in the pot now. So I will use the same pot, it's big enough. And I'll start with a base layer of soil here. And then I think that I might just try to put some of this mycelium back around the edges. sure that this is a perfect idea because all the small roots are going to grow back into this very organic substrate but okay it will help the tree but I'm not going to put anything of that stuff in the middle you see And so if the tree starts to grow, well, it will grow roots that circle the, the pot. But these are the roots that I want to cut off. Now there is not a good root spread here. But at least it's starting to be something a little radial. Well open them up as well as I can using some substrates to block some roots that are bouncing back and these ones well that's these are fine roots and I just need to put some weight on it while I'm tucking them in. Okay. Same here. Mm -hmm. Push these back a little, well, down I mean. Uh, it's gonna need a good scoop extra. I think that now everything is well covered and I can start working the substrate in. And I'm always trying to start from the center and work my way to the sides. And by that, trying to get the roots radial. Which is a quite logical approach I think I don't know if it is well a widely used technique but it seems to work and makes a lot of sense I think okay and now just a good scoop right here in the middle to both sides lift the tree just a centimeter and work the soil in right under the tree 
so that the flare goes in a nice smooth way and then next year this tree will come out of the pot again we'll have a look at how the roots did of course keep a close eye on the tree this year the only thing that it needs to do is recover from this first root work and grow well so no pinching no wiring no nothing just watering and uh, feeding and that's all we can ask i'm just gonna mount a couple of stones around this tree make sure that it doesn't move too much I'm shaking I'm cold I've been told you I've been working a whole lot of time on this root base yeah. so I'll be glad to be inside because it's rather chilly well not only was it cold look I'm making clouds but it also started to rain so well I had to make a run for it um, well just to finish this video um, severe root prune well root work not a whole lot of root prune on this um, little scot spine um, a couple of dead needles here which I will use as fertilizer um, but okay I'm, I'm, I'm rather happy I think this tree needs a good monitoring this year needs to do a whole lot of growing probably next year or maybe even at the end of the summer I'll get it out of the pot and put it in a gigantic pot um, to um, to make it grow even more do maybe a first selection of branches uh, not that I really need to do a selection but what I want to do is at least get rid of some of the parts where there are three branches growing like here so I'll probably even remove two probably the top and then um, because you don't want to have these whorls that are forming so better take uh, a good snip at that and because this is a very young tree it is extremely bendable most of the pines are and you can uh, shape it uh, what, uh, however you want it to be uh, shaped so um, yeah but that's for the future in the meantime I hope that this tree has a good growing season um, that I didn't go too crazy on the roots but I think that's gonna be okay so yeah that's it for today thank you for watching and see you next time